The Gospel According to John The Gospel According to John Chapter 3 Chapter 3 verse 1 Chapter 3 verse 1 There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher, come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly I say to you, Unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Most assuredly I say to you, Unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said to him, Are you the teacher of Israel? And do not know these things. Most assuredly, I say to you, we speak what we know and testify what we have seen, and you do not receive our witness. If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how will you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended to heaven but he who came down from heaven, that is, the Son of Man who is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. He who believes in Him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that the light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because the deeds were evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light, and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light, that his deeds may be clearly seen, that they have been done in God. Amen. If for one second we think how we were in our mother's womb, in complete darkness, with that acknowledgement of the outer world, in rest, but also in trouble. And this trouble is created from the surroundings that we are living in. And all of a sudden, this existence, this babe, comes out in a light that's blinding. Without realizing anything in a world that he could never imagine existed. But it is reality. With tears, he comes into the world, but slowly, with the caring of the mother and father, he adapts, he realizes the surroundings in which he is in. He increases, he survives, he grows up and fulfills his purpose. That Natural birth and a natural life. Complete darkness into the light. Now let's see the person, the natural person, as the word of God described it to us in the book of Job. In trouble, in sorrow, in darkness, without having the acknowledgement there's something else. Nicodemus was such a man, a teacher of Israel, 
But in a life of a few days, full of trouble, born for sorrow, with the law in his hands to preach, and a God above him to judge him and condemn him. That was the life of Nicodemus. And all of a sudden he is a young man, 30 years old, to speak about eternal life, the kingdom of heaven, resurrection, the rapture of the church. He is a teacher. He is a rabbi. But what this young man does, this rabbi hasn't seen before. And he is sincere, but he doesn't understand. How can this happen? A Nazarene to preach with power and authority. His heart listening. And when Nicodemus hears him, his heart's on fire. And he sees him saying, Be healed of the leper to be cleansed. Take up your bed and walk. And for this paralytic man to walk. See, and this man born blind to see in great amazement, in confusion. And his sincere heart pushes him to meet Jesus. And he doesn't go with pride. He is the teacher of Israel, yes. You are the teacher of Israel, Christ said. And you do not know these things. Yes, he is a teacher of Israel. And he goes humbly. And to this illiterate and untrained man. Says to him, Rabbi, teacher. That was a great title, the word teacher. In those days. And he still is. Only this title, Christ cancelled it. Because we have one teacher, and that's Jesus. Hallelujah. We haven't got people. And Nicodemus walked through the darkness and drew close to the light and said, Teacher, we know that you are from God. For no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. He comes in wonder with questions to ask, to learn, to understand, to comprehend. There's something else here that I haven't been taught of. I don't know. It is from God. And I do love God. But there's something else here. And, my beloved brethren, our Lord Jesus Christ didn't try to explain because he knew that he would never understand. This is very serious. He's got complete assurance that he will not be able to understand. A blind man cannot understand no matter how much you explain to him what color the sea is. It's blue. It's a nice blue. A blind man cannot understand this. What colour heaven is? What colour a rose is? A blind man cannot understand this. He cannot taste. A man who has lost the sense of taste. Is it bitter? Is it sweet? What does bitter mean? What does sweet mean? It's a violin. But he's deaf, he can't hear it. What is a violin? What sound does it make? What's the difference between a violin and a guitar? A piano and a clarinet? He can't understand it. The limits of natural man are restricted, completely restricted. They're all in a black box. And Jesus Christ knows that this man wants to learn, but Jesus Christ cannot explain. And he puts a separation. What we know, we speak of, we, who are you? 
we who are born of the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. We know, and what we know we speak of, but you cannot understand and you can't receive these things. So, you must do something else, Nicodemus. You must turn your eyes elsewhere, not for you to find knowledge. So I can try to explain to you, these are of the things that cannot happen. This thing cannot be done. You cannot understand what the Kingdom of Heaven means if you are not in it. In other words, let me say it rightly, you cannot understand what spiritual life is if you are not out by birth of your natural life. If you do not come out of the womb, your mother's womb, you cannot understand what light is. My beloved brethren, it is a complete necessity for us to know what natural man is, and we'll see why afterward, and what spiritual man is. A natural man is in a cocoon. His knowledge, his experiences, his opinions, his wisdom, his understanding, they are all closed up. Like a child who has never ever left his bedroom, throughout all his life he's in that bedroom. Like a villager in his village and has never ever seen New York. And much much more than that. His wisdom, his knowledge, his authority, his power, his experience is completely restricted. That's why. Our Lord Jesus Christ, my beloved brethren, comes to show us a new way, which is the way of the love of God. God did not make man to be only for a few days full of trouble in this world, to judge him and then condemn him. But he gives him the freedom. You can get out. And here I want to open a parenthesis, my brothers, who remain in today's message. We are outside. Let's not go back in. Let's not let our hearts go back in. In that black basement. That's how God showed me this, so I can understand it. A sunny meadow and a black hole under the earth. This hole under the earth had sin, had dirt, and man wonders, what's in there, in that hole? What do you think is in that hole? Be happy with the sun, be happy with your freedom, be happy with the glory of God. You're looking in that hole. You know what the backslider does? He leaves the joy of heaven and goes and squeezes into that basement. Hallelujah. And now our Lord says to Nicodemus, you cannot understand Nicodemus if you are not born again, if God doesn't come to change your life. When God made Adam and Eve, He did not make them as people are today. He made them in His surroundings, in freedom, in light, in the truth, in joy, in eternity. But the first transgression of man led man to be in exile, in captivity. Once in Greece people called that a faraway island, restricted in exile. Exiled on that island, far away, condemned to death. To be governed by the ruler of hatred, of darkness, of the tyrant, devil and Satan. But God, my brethren, loved man so much. 
Man didn't go there because God sent him. Man chose transgression. Man chose sin. But God so loved the world that he did not spare his only begotten son. And he sent him on earth to be like man in complete restriction. Chronically, he lives to be 70, 80 years. Jesus Christ lived to be 33. In the restriction of a region there in Israel. In the restriction of men. A slave, a servant in captivity, bound in prison. That's what man is. Without hope. And with eternal judgment upon him. And he strives to be freed, but he gets tangled more and more. But God loved the world so much that he sent Jesus Christ to die so man can live. To be crucified so man can be freed. And he doesn't say to man, leave from there and come here. Because that would be difficult, even impossible. Don't do that again. God doesn't say that. Well, what does he say? My child, call, call my son to come to free you. Call upon his name where you are in the depths of prison, of darkness, of lies, of sin, of adultery, of fornication, of uncleanliness, of death. Call upon his name in the bonds of the devil in which you are in, in the bonds of your passions, in the bonds of your sentiments, in the bonds of the reality of hell. Call upon Jesus Christ, my son, in which I gave for you, so he can come and take you into eternal life. To free you, because whoever the son frees, this man is free indeed. Nothing else, nothing else. Call upon his name. And I assure you, whoever calls upon the name of Jesus Christ will be saved. What does this mean? He will come out of there. Christ will take him out. Christ will transfer him from darkness into his amazing light. He will take him out. He will free him. So easy, so easy. So simple, so simple. Call out to him. Invite him. How sad I am sometimes when I hear that that person called the enemy of his soul. Is he crazy? There is Jesus Christ and you call others to come to you. You call people. You ask help from people. There is the name which is unique, given to man from God in which we can be saved. And you use other means. There is this almighty name in which you can cry out, Jesus, son of David, show mercy. And you don't do it. Dear Lord, how can this happen? Nicodemus is right. He doesn't know. Man is right. We have no excuse at all. No excuse at all. We are inexcusable. How can this happen? I'm old. How can I enter my mother's womb again and be born? Natural man cannot understand spiritual matters. And our Lord said, I repeat, we speak of what we know and testify what we have seen. And we, my brethren, we know and we have seen. And this is what we speak of and that's what we testify. But what matters is how we continue. It's not only that He takes us out of darkness and out of bondage, but He says to us, you will not enter judgment 
there's no judgment for you. You believe in Jesus Christ. You are free completely. Poor Job, if you only knew all these things. No one knows, of course. But if he knew all those things then, when he was weeping and complaining against God. But, my beloved brethren, Christ says, this is condemnation. Let's see what condemnation is. The light has come into the world and we saw it. We saw the true light. Yes, we did receive Holy Spirit. The light came. And we saw it. We testified about it. The Holy Spirit came and we received it. But, now, this is a crucial point. What do you love? The light or the darkness? And of course, very simply and logically, we all could say, the light, the light. But, the matter is not that simple. What do you truly love? The light or the darkness? And this will be revealed to each one of us by our own works. Are you the son of light? Do you live in the light? There are conditions, my beloved brethren, so we can obtain the freedom of the Holy Spirit. If we have fellowship with God, and there's no obstacle between us that separate us from God, and the blood of Jesus Christ truly casts away our sins, and a second condition, if we have fellowship with others. There's no separation. Then, and only then, the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from every sin. Otherwise, the blood is weak for the person who hasn't got fellowship with God and his brethren, who has separation. And man now has chosen. He has judged himself. The light came, but he chose darkness. Because his words were evil. Because his heart is full of bitterness. Because he did not love the light. He thought that he loved the light. He thinks that he loves the light. He believes, he thinks, and he walks according to his own thoughts, his own opinions, and the guidance of his heart, which is deceitful above all things, and exceedingly wicked. And he thinks that he's going well. And he thinks that he can do the work of God also. And he thinks that he can take part in the rapture of the church. And he hasn't understood this fool, this babe of a Christian, that the trumpet of God will be heard and his lamp will be out. And he will never enter that evil and bad servant who loved darkness rather than the light because the deeds were evil. And the question is, my brethren, according to my humble opinion, crushing, what am I? Because ten were the virgins. The foolish ones didn't know that they were foolish. And they went with joy to meet the bridegroom with complete assurance. Let's go and meet our bridegroom with our lamps lit. But the bridegroom delayed and it was bad for them. Even though God was showing long suffering so the others could be saved. For them it was harmful. The bridegroom delayed. The lamps went out darkness. They loved the darkness rather than the light because their deeds were evil. Because whoever practices evil, whoever practices evil hates the light and does not come to the light 
lest his deeds should be exposed. Everyone who practices evil, even though he hasn't understood it in reality, not only doesn't he love the light, but he hates the light. And he doesn't come into the light. He hates the light and doesn't come into the light. He hasn't got fellowship with others. His life isn't revealed to all. It's in secret. He's in the dark place. And every time, my brethren, it's necessary to examine if someone else knows about our lives, are we going to be happy or sad about it? And, especially in summer, there is this serious problem. We're on holidays. And there, maybe no one can see us. But it's not only in summer with holidays, it's every day, at work. Just think of a Christian to come here to preach, to prophesy. And at his job, he curses. He swears. Disgusting words. And for him to be at ease, I'm a very good Christian. Or someone else, he goes home and he curses his wife. Or she goes home and curses her children. A nice Christian. Doesn't love the light. He hates the light. That's why he doesn't come into the light. He loves darkness. And I won't say about other sins and evil practices. And he enters into prison. Even though God has freed him, even though Christ has freed him and has brought him into eternal life, he, she, the Christian, the fool, enters into prison by himself. And even though he has a life that's eternal, even though he's got a life full of Christ's peace, who is the Prince of Peace, even though he's got a life given by God in joy, in blessings, in happiness, in the glory of God, in the presence of God, in the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, he enters without knowing it, maybe, uncarefully, he enters into that basement and there he obtains a life of a few days, a life full of trouble, born for sorrow. He strives and nothing goes right in his life. He tries. And even though he says peace, destruction comes all of a sudden because he is in darkness. Because he doesn't love the light, he hates the light. Because he practices evil. He practices evil. And he wonders. And he goes against himself. And he goes against other people. And he goes against God. And he goes against the king. And he goes against the church. And he goes against. And he goes against. And he goes against. But he's in prison. Even though he has been freed. Even though God has taken him out. He's inside again. He cannot sleep at night, full of trouble his heart is. And my brethren, let's not look at others today, but listen to the word of God. Let's look at ourselves, because I'm completely sure that we all stumble in many things. And do not accuse yourself more than you should, but also do not proclaim yourself as innocent as that is wrong also. Say, Lord, I am of those who stumble in many things. I have also gotten angry. I have been full of wrath. And I have done this and that. But what do I do now? That's what matters. And the answer, my brethren, is so simple. Whoever calls upon the name of Jesus will be saved. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. He sent Him so that whoever believes in Him should not perish 
but have everlasting life. And we shall remain in that, my brethren. Lord, I stumble in many things. I don't care about the others, I'm talking about me now. I've made many mistakes. Yesterday, the day before that, I stumble in many things, and I messed up there, but having complete acknowledgement of my weakness and no trust in my heart, I do trust the Jesus Christ who you have sent. And I know that when I call out to him, he will not say to me, serves you right. He will not say, get out of there if you want, by yourself. But when I call out to him, he will come and take me in his arms and say, come my child, let me take you to the Father. Come, let me take you to the throne of his majesty. Come, let me take you to God's mercy. Come, and I will tell him that for all your sins, all your evil practices, I, on the cross of Calvary, hurt, paid, and shed my blood for you. My beloved brethren, let's not lose this chance that God is giving us as long as we are here today. Let's not lose this chance which God has given us through Jesus Christ. Today, therefore, if you hear the voice of the Holy Spirit, do not harden your heart, but say, Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me. Confess your sins to Him. Call Jesus Christ. He will come and free you. Amen.